So we'll use this following uh, period of time to sit in meditation and cultivate our minds in order to bring our hearts to peace. We use the meditation object of the breath, being aware as the breath comes in and leaves our bodies. And we take this as the foundation of our mindfulness. So this quality of mindfulness, we can also call it right recollection. And it's something that we need to put our efforts into having and maintaining, to keeping mindfulness there throughout our, our daily lives. So the day of Visaka Puja is coming up, and that was the day that the Buddha attained enlightenment. And as he did that, he was mindful of his breath. He knew his breath as it came and went until he was able to absorb into the jhanas. He first went into the first jhana, then second, third, up to fourth jhana. His mindfulness was very well firmly established and his samadhi was full and complete. He then contemplated into his past lives and could see that this process of birth and death went on without end. It went back and there was no perceivable beginning to it. He then went on to contemplate into the karma of beings and could see how the beings of samsara are born according to their karma, according to their actions. In the third watch of the night, he was then awakened. And he awakened to the four noble truths of stress, the cause of stress, the uh, stilling of that stress, the escape from it, and the path leading to the end of it. He destroyed the mental defilements that had bound his heart for a very long time. He cut through them through the sharp sword of his wisdom. And no one else was able to do this. And that's because this, uh, these chelases, they're, they're very strong and very um, confusing. And they're, they've been buried deep in our hearts and the hearts of humans for a very long time. And so if we don't have the parami, the spiritual virtues of the Buddha, then we simply won't be able to do this. It was only the Buddha who was able to develop his bharamis to this degree, starting from such a bharami, the perfection of truthfulness. And then there's nekama bharami of relinquishment and effort, the bharami of kindness, of virtue, of patient endurance, of generosity, of equanimity. And these are all the, the paramis, the ten paramis that he developed until they reached a state of completion. He sacrificed his life countless times in order to develop these spiritual perfections. All of us can count ourselves as fortunate that we've met with the Dhamma of the Buddha. Because a Buddha coming into this world and attaining enlightenment is not an easy thing to happen. After he was awakened, he then went out to teach the Dhamma. And it's like he planted a fruit orchard. He went through all the effort of planting that orchard. And all we have to do is just walk into it and pick fruits from the trees and eat. So he developed this, he developed his qualities for countless lives in order to be able to come and give us the Dhamma. 
but we haven't developed these spiritual qualities to nearly the extent that the Buddha did. He was born and he died countless times for us, for the welfare of humans, of devas, of brahmas, the welfare of all beings. So therefore we come to chant our praise of these, the virtuous qualities of the Buddha through the highest respect that we have in our hearts. And every day we do this, we recollect the goodness of the Buddha. We recall his great wisdom, his great purity, and his great compassion. And the more we chant, the more full and joyous our hearts become. And this, the goodness of the Buddha leaves a very deep impression in our hearts. We find that the, that the virtues that he has, they go, they go on without end. So as we chant, then we feel rapture arise and our hearts become very peaceful. And it can be that we just watch our breath as it comes into our bodies and leaves and we use the meditation mantra of Buddha along with that. And just by reciting that word Buddha, the mind is already full of, of peace. So just like Anandapindika, the disciple of the Buddha, before he met the Buddha, all it took was for him to just hear the Buddha's name. And he felt this very deep joy throughout the entire night. So for us, we chant a recollection of the Buddha and the Buddha's great qualities. And this in turn brings up joyful feelings in our hearts. And maybe then as we do this, in, in a future life, we may hear the name of the Buddha and feel rapture throughout the entire night as well. But it's not necessary for us to wait around for the next Buddha to come, because the Dhamma is still here. All we need to do is bring our hearts into peace and then contemplate we look into the cause of stress, and that cause is clinging and craving. So therefore, we need to put an effort to bringing our hearts into peace. And this is engaging in the path that will take us to defeating these qualities of clinging and of uh, and of craving. When wisdom arises within, we'll be able to see into the empty nature of the body. We'll see that human bodies, they come from cells. Initially, there was just one cell, and then that reproduced into two cells, and then four cells, and eight cells, and so on. It went on at a very fast rate. In a flash, you know, the, the body kind of grows and it, it develops very quickly until the body kind of forms to the point where consciousness is able to come in. But as soon as the consciousness enters, then it clings to this physical form as being me and mine. But really, it's just a collection of the four elements or another way you could look at it is just a, a collection of cells. And this is how uh, scientists see it this, this, uh, these days. That if you take apart our bodies, then all you'll find is cells. And can we consider that to be me or mine? It's just emptiness. There's no self there. If we take apart those cells even further, then we'll just see them as being atoms. And if we take those apart, then it's just uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's just empty. So the Buddha attained to arahantship and he perceived into this nature of emptiness in all conditions, that there's no true self within anything that's physical or mental. He became enlightened all through his own efforts. So we should be 
determined in this life to put forth uh, effort and cultivate this way of practice, to pay homage to the Buddha through our walking of this path of sila samadhi panya. And one day we will see the Dhamma. And in seeing the Dhamma, then we meet with the Buddha, with the true Buddha in our hearts. So everyone be wholehearted in your efforts.